Okay, this is our last video in this sequence of partial fraction decomposition videos. We're going to talk now about case four, repeated quadratic factors. Our objective is to, again, integrate rational functions, but this time the denominator contains a product of repeated quadratic irreducible factors. Right, so suppose we have some denominator q of x, a polynomial, with a factor ax squared plus bx plus c raised to the r power, okay? So there's multiple of them. We might also call this multiplicity. I might slip and say multiplicity. It means the same thing. Then the decomposition will contain r terms, not just one, but r. So if that's a power of three, three terms. And each one has the form ax plus b. So a1, b1, ax1, a1x plus b1 over ax squared plus bx squared plus c. Now these are, sorry, bx plus c. These are lowercase a and b and c. These come from the problem. A, these a's and b's though are undetermined coefficients. Okay, plus a2x plus b2 over that same quadratic factor squared plus dot 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 all the way up until you get the last power of that factor. Let's see a basic example. going to evaluate the integral from, uh, let's go from 0 to 1. Is that exciting? Yeah, why not? From 0 to 1 of x squared plus x plus 1 all over x squared plus 1 squared dx. Okay, so our decomposition here suggests we need to solve x squared plus x plus 1 over x squared plus 1 squared equals ax plus b x squared plus 1 plus cx plus d x squared plus 1 squared, okay? So power of 2 means we actually end up with four undetermined coefficients. So you can see how it can get complicated pretty quickly. Um, but let's just follow our nose, convert this into something that we can handle, multiply by the least common denominator. We get ax plus b times x squared plus 1 plus cx plus d. So we get ax cubed plus bx squared plus ax plus b plus cx plus d. So we should get uh, four equations out of this because we have four distinct powers of x, including the constant term. So the first one is zero equals um, a, that's easy, um, 1 equals b, that's also easy, 1 equals a plus c, and 1 equals b plus d. Okay, so a and b are given to us already. This indicates that because a is 0, then c is 1. And then because b is 1, then d is 0. Okay, simple enough. Then why don't we go ahead and then split this up then. So we have the integral from 0 to 1 of x squared plus x plus 1 over x squared plus 1 squared. 
going to be the integral from 0 to 1 of the a is nothing, so then we just got the b there. So 1 over x squared plus 1 plus x over x squared plus 1 squared dx. Okay. Okay, so how do we handle this? Now, this first term is a, an immediate application of tan inverse. So we're going to apply the inverse tangent rule. And this one, we're going to let u equal x squared plus 1, which means du equals 2x dx. And the u substitution will lend us, we'll be able to use a, a natural logarithm. So natural logarithm. Okay, so we have integral from 0 to 1 of dx over x squared plus 1 plus the integral from 0 to 1. Oh, and if we convert uh, into a problem with u, well, let me just write it out again. x over x squared plus 1 squared dx. So replacing u, so x squared plus 1 with u, that means 0 turns into 1. And 1 turns into 2. And then we have 1 half du over u squared. And then, so this is gonna, just going to be tan inverse of x from 0 to 1 minus or plus, I should say, 1 half times, and if that's uh, u squared, then that's going to be a negative 1 over u from 1 to 2. So we have here 10 inverse of 1 minus 10 inverse of 0 uh, minus, I guess, I just plot the negative 1 half. 1 over u evaluated at 2 minus 1 over u evaluated at 1. Tan inverse of 1, remember that that has a uh, range of between negative root 2, sorry, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Um, and that's going to give us pi over 4. Sorry, what am I talking about? Yeah, that's pi over 4 minus 0, so pi over 4. And then 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half times negative 1 half is plus 1 half, 1 quarter. This is our answer, pi plus 1 over 4. Okay. Okay.